Bend Around the Wind by Skylia. Chapter 15. Benefit of the Doubt. The workshop was coming along nicely. It was set up at one end of the cargo area, close to the engine room and generators. You could not get any work done yet because they were still busy setting up the whole thing. First, the right equipment was needed and the right tools. They would definitely need to make a few stops to get what was still missing, but at least there was something to work with. Tony didn't have to think about Earth and how far they were still when his mind was occupied. He had dozens and dozens of tools lying around everywhere, and also some of the repair parts from the cargo. There were still too many he did not figure out what to use for. The whole workshop was one big chaos, but Tony could see how it would work, like in a few months, how everything will find its proper place, where he could set up the tools needed for forging, which desk could be used for delicate work. Note to self, he needed to get or build a magnifying glass, and also which workbench would be perfect for assembling. He could see all that in the chaos that surrounded them for now. He already had extra lights everywhere, so at least that was finished finally. Once they were done, the workshop will be pretty awesome. Not as awesome as his workshop at home. But on the other hand, that didn't have alien tech in it, so there was that. Where will the forge go? Logie asked. I haven't decided yet, Tony answered, not looking up from the tools he was going through. Depends. I'm really against middle-aged stuff, so no coal or anything. I was thinking gas forge with a cylindrical forge chamber, but then I realized that we don't have any hydrocarbon fuel. And pure hydrogen, which we could get out of water, puts out too much ultraviolet light, and I'm kind of sensitive to that stuff. He put some of the tools he deemed useful aside and kept searching through the chaos on the floor. So, some sort of electric forge, right? He continued the explanation. Unless we want to get our hands on natural gas, he said, which is a big no. I don't want to deal with that shit, so I'm going to have to tap into the generators. I will need to power up quite a lot of things here, actually. That will take time. What about the energy and the weapons? Loki asked. Surely they could power tools as well as guns. That is a good question. The guns are not electric in nature, though, obviously. I can't study it before the workshop is done. This will take months, Loki said as he looked around the chaos Tony made. It's not like we don't have all the time in the world, he shrugged. I suppose. You could help me, you know. What are you doing exactly? Sorting out tools that could be useful, Tony answered. Suppliers, clamps, tongs, any kind of screwdrivers, soldering iron, wrenches, all go into that desk. I'm going to have to build a drill and a blowtorch, but it seems like I have everything I need for that, so no problem. We do have chisels, right? Loki asked. I will need a small one for engraving runes into my armor. I will need a laser cutter anyway. It won't be too hard to make it suitable for engraving too. That's a lot better, especially if you need to carve small symbols. Forget the traditional chisel. All right, Loki said. We'll see, I suppose. So you're going to help or what? It's not like I have anything better to do. Loki was a lot more agreeable lately. The difference from the raging madman he encountered on Earth was huge. Not like he didn't know that Loki was off his rockers back then, but seeing how he acted while being calm and collected was still fascinating. Or maybe being a bit less of an asshole was his way of saying thanks for the rescue back on Galand. Speaking of... So, I was thinking... Tony started. Is there any way for someone to learn... I'll speak... Or get it, or something. I don't know how that works. Loki stayed silent for a few moments, so Tony looked up at him. It seemed like he stopped mid-step on his way to put some tools down to Tony's useful pile on the desk. Why? He asked. Because it's annoying that I can't speak for myself on a foreign planet. Tony answered. You wouldn't have to translate for me then. It would be pretty cool to understand everything and being understood. My big mouth is one of my best assets. It sucks that I can't speak up. Maybe, but I doubt you would be able to handle it, he said and put the tools down. How so? Human minds are not meant to work that way. I'm afraid it would be too overwhelming for you. It is the gift of the Aesir that they shared with some of the old races, but human minds are too simple for it. Simple? Are you kidding me? It is a fact. It would be too much for someone like you. But it's like the DNI, right? I mean, I don't hear the words, but the pure meaning. That's what you said. The way the ship transfers data into my mind seems awfully similar to me. It is more complicated than that. There is not a guarantee that your mind could handle it. 
I have a very awesomely advanced mind. Thank you very much. I'm pretty sure that no amount of information could overwhelm me like that. You may be advanced among humans, but that does not mean you are advanced among gods! Loki said almost snapped. This was some sort of superiority stuff again. It had to be... Oh, really? You mean that someone like the Thunder Boy who walks around in a red cape with a big hammer is smarter than me? Really? It is not about intelligence. A superior mind can handle things an inferior one cannot even hope to. I'm going to stop you right there and call baloney. Tony said, yeah, you're pretty smart, but you're not light years ahead of me. You have no superior mind. Maybe the last time you spent time on Earth with the Vikings, that was true, but not anymore. He was getting kind of annoyed at this point. Nobody got away with belittling his mind. There was an angry gleam in Loki's eyes that Tony was very familiar with, but it didn't stop him. You have not said a single reason why it couldn't be done. You just proclaimed a bunch of crap that sounds like fascist principles to me. Superior, raise my ass. You have no proof that you are in any way superior when it comes to the mind. You're stronger and more durable and live longer. But that's it. A turtle can be stronger and older than me. But that doesn't mean it's smarter or superior. I said it before and I say it again. You are not better than me. If there is any real reasons why this wouldn't work, say it. But don't just iterate empty excuses. Oh, the angry gleam in Loki's eyes got worse, much worse. Tony was still crouched down on the floor among the tools, while the urge to stand up to be a bit more on the same level as the god was big. He didn't move. I see it now, Loki said. His tone clipped, the words uttered slowly, like he was trying to keep his anger in check. Not good. Of course. You want the all-speak. It is the only missing piece. The last skill I have to offer. That take a moment to register. What? The final advantage I have, and the last thing you have need of. It would be so simple for you then. What are you talking about? Tony asked. Do not take me for a fool! Loki exclaimed, raising his voice. You think I cannot see through this farce? That I don't know why you truly want the gift of the all-speak? I already told you why I want it. Ha! Huh? Trying to trick a trickster! How pathetic! The angry gleam shifted into something different, something more unstable and wild, something mad, something ready to burst out and destroy. Tony stood up, finally leaving the tools on the ground. He could already feel the adrenaline pumping in his veins. Loki's presence did not unnerve him like this in a long time. He never forgot that he was dangerous. Suddenly faced with him like this was a great reminder of that too. Loki was like a tropical storm. Once his anger reared its ugly head, you could not be sure where he would strike and how much destruction he would leave in his wake. He should probably defuse the situation. Only he could not understand why Loki got ticked off by the question this much. Why do you think I want it then? He asked. He kept his voice calm. He hoped it would annoy the god further. Why? Why? This is a game! You truly think me such a fool? I have already known that you have no real use for me. The second the crew was gone, I lost all my leverage. And now you would take the last advantage I have. The last thing to stop you from trying to dispose of me? I think not! Why the hell would you think that? I told you already. I need you to get back home. No! No, you don't! You don't need anything from me! You are well capable of controlling the ship on your own! You have weapons, you have provisions, and all this technology! The only reason you still need me is because you cannot communicate with the races of the Andromeda! That was our deal! That we work together, because we need what the other has to offer! But that changed, right? I cannot get back without you, but you could easily get rid of me and suffer no adverse consequences! So no, you will not have the all speak! I will not allow you to have such control over my fate! Tony blinked a few times and let that sink in. So you're worried that I'm going to backstab you? Why would I do that? We have a deal. If you don't try to screw me over, I won't either. I thought that much was clear already. That was before! It became obvious that this ship will only up at you! If I really didn't need you, why do you think I went back for you on Galand? I don't know! Loki snapped. Why did you?! It makes no sense! Tony took a breath to calm down a bit before he spoke again. We have a deal, alright? And I'm sticking to it. Tony started. And just because I don't necessarily need you on an average boring day, it doesn't mean that I won't need your help in the future. 
Tony explained. Loki still looked on edge, wound tight, ready to snap, so Tony talked quickly. Even if I do manage to build myself a suit, I would still need you. You're stronger and well trained in combat, not to mention your magic. I would get my human ass killed pretty easily without backup. You were not in need of help, Uncle Land. Yes, I was. I was driving, you were shooting. This is a partnership. We need to work together. You and me, me and you. Nobody getting rid of anybody, alright? I have no reason to turn on you, and not just because of the Allspeak. You've done nothing to make me turn on you. Oh, so you have already forgotten about the things I did on your precious home planet? You've done nothing since we were imprisoned, Tony corrected. You mean to tell me that all before that is forgotten, then? No, it's not forgotten, but- And that you do not wish for me to receive my just punishment? That you won't try and get me captured once we're on Midgard again so that your shield can end me over to Asgard? You've been punished enough. That finally seemed to surprise Loki enough to shake him out of his anger. What? You told me yourself. The dead do not care. It's only the ones still alive who demand someone to be punished. I've been there with you in that prison. I know what you've been put through. Punishing you even more won't change a thing. The damage done to New York won't be repaired, and the dead won't magically come back to life just because you're locked up or hurt some more. It would not change anything. Tony sighed and crouched down again back to his tolls. Maybe it was not smart to do so, since Loki could still be in a murderous mood. But for some reason, he doubted it. So far as I'm concerned, I'm moving on. You've been punished enough. Do you have any idea how much death and destruction I caused? And do you have any idea how much I caused? Tony asked in return. I'm just saying, until you do something again, we won't have a problem with one another. We get back to Earth, you go one way, I go another. I won't try to capture you. I won't try to hand you over to Asgard. He looked up again to look Loki in the eye. But if you ever try to kill and destroy on my planet again, I will show up to kick your ass. He shrugged again, not really knowing what else to say. That's all what I'm saying. Until we reach Earth, we're in this together. So I won't betray you if you don't betray me. Simple as that. Get that in your head. Loki stayed silent for long moments. Tony let him think it through and went back to quietly sort out his tools. But the god stayed silent for a very long time. You really have major trust issues, huh? Loki had all kinds of issues, for sure. Issues that made Tony's issues look mild. He was interested why, because the Loki he was catching glimpses of, the one who was calm and easy to coax and do banter, was hidden behind an angry, arrogant mask. And there had to be a reason for that. Something was broken in him, shattered to bits, and Tony wondered who or what was the cause of it. I won't betray you if you do not betray me. You have my word. Loki said finally, and Tony wanted to sigh in relief. The anger was gone from his tone. He looked up at him again. The god's whole presence was different. His expression, his eyes, and the tilt of his mouth, almost like he was a completely different person. But if you two betray me, I will hunt you down and make you regret you were born. That I can promise as well. You got it. Tony acknowledged. He was glad that he could sort this one out without bloodshed or destruction. He should really be proud of himself. Loki didn't even try to strangle him. My magic is limited, Loki said after some silence. Hmm. Tony looked up at him again. That is why I cannot give you the gift of the Allspeak, he explained. You wanted the real reason. Oh, I see. What's wrong with your magic then? Tony asked. He tried to make his tone light so that they could move on from the previous argument. We are too far away from the Nine Realms. Explain that one to the magic noob here, Tony prompted. The Nine Realms exist on a metaphysical plane. They cannot even be approached by a spaceship. It is an altogether different plane of existence. Asgard is not even a planet, but a piece of land hanging on the Yggdrasil with the help of magic. A piece of land? Yes, like... In the shape of a disc of sorts. Oh, really? Is it also on the back of a giant turtle and some elephants? He asked with an amused tone. I do not know what you're talking about. 
I have to give you some books when we get back to Earth. I thought you would go one way and I in another. That doesn't mean I can't give you some books before you go, Tony said. Loki huffed, and it almost sounded amused. So, magic. Metaphysical plane of existence. We are not in that plane anymore, Loki explained. The cosmic energies here are completely different from that of the Nine Realms. I need that energy to perform magic, but I have yet to adjust myself to its power. I could use some simple, smaller powers by using my own energy reserves, but that would tire me out too easily, so it is not suitable for battle. I would require immediate rest after using magic like that, and I will not make myself vulnerable in such a way. You could seal the drake, though, Stark pointed out. You really think that some finger painting equals real magic? Loki asked. Drawing runes or making potions is not beyond my skills even yet, but those are hardly the tools of a mage. Ah, uh, sorcerer stuff, right? Yes. Yes. I may not be one of them, but I do know their spells. They can be useful once in a while. But it's only a matter of time, right? Before you... He made a vague gesture with his hand. Get to know the cosmic stuff of this place. Yes. I do not know how long, though, so do not expect me to perform expert magic for a while. I thought it would be... Fair to inform you about it, considering this... Partnership. You did come back for me on Galand, despite having nothing to force you to do so, so I am willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. Thank you. I appreciate it. Tony said sweetly, which earned him an eye roll. It was really interesting how quickly Loki's mood could change. Tropical storm, truly. One moment you're basking in sunlight at a beach, the next you're running for your life while the sky's falling down. Tony was honest, though. This was quite a sign of trust from Loki to tell him this much. And once you got all your mojo back, you can amaze me with all your awesome drinks. Magic! Hmm? It's magic! Wielding or spellcasting! Loki said firmly. A trick is something a whore does for money. Tony barked out a laugh at that. Duly noted.